In this quiet garden, within the Desert Botanical Garden, excitement is growing over a royal visit. The crowd grows with the anticipation, and soon the honored guests arrive. Not in a coach, but an overnight FedEx box. The royals are monarchs. Monarch butterflies, to be specific. They've traveled a long way, and while they're not frozen or sitting on dry ice, they are very cool. The reason for that is when butterflies are cold, they tend to be a little less active. So they're not flying around as much, and they kind of just go to sleep. They've come from a farm in Northern California, so they've had kind of a long trip for a butterfly overnight. So I'm sure they're ready to come out and fly around and stretch their wings. Um, and in a few minutes, we'll start passing these envelopes out so that you can help us release them. After the instruction, the fun begins. Oh ah, they want to come out though? <laughs> Go ahead. They, they don't bite. <laughs> they don't have teeth. I know. Go, baby, go. There goes one. Oh, look, Trish, look at mine. They're going to come. Oh, 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 oh. I know. While many stayed to admire their handiwork, a second event was taking place with a more serious purpose. Chris Klein, founder of the Southwest Monarch Study, was preparing a group of visitors to help in some important research. Klein is testing the accepted theory that monarchs who live west of the Rocky Mountains migrate to the coast of California, while those living east of the Rocky Mountains migrate to a range around Mexico City. Arizona's placement below the Rockies leaves the scientific community unsure where southwestern monarchs migrate, or if they migrate at all. Well, what we have found is that you know, with lots of research, you end up getting more questions than, than you do answers. So, um, so we might find the answer, you know, that they're definitely migrating to Mexico, but there's other questions that are cropping up. The Southwest Monarch Study hopes to fill in the gaps. The job is simple. Place small blue stickers on the underwing of the insect, then let it go and wait for interested people to report where they end up. On the tag is printed a number and an email address. Over 3,000 have been tagged so far with recoveries from places as far flung as Mexico City. The research continues and these happy volunteers are one more step in the process. For more information on the study, you can contact Chris Klein at swmonarchs at yahoo.com. And for more information on the Desert Botanical Garden, see their website at dbg.org. It's clear that the happenings of this particular afternoon will be part of the memories of those in attendance for years to come.